I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're going to talk about solid state drives for your Dell PowerEdge R920 server. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R920 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything that helps you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, we'll top in. Uh, this video, as I mentioned, is going to be specifically focused on the Dell PowerEdge R920, and we're going to be specifically focused on solid state drives. So here's what we're going to do in this video. We are going to go over the different types of compatible solid state drives for your R820 and your R920. We're going to go over the max speeds, the max sizes. We're going to physically install one, which is really easy because it's a hot swap drive. Then we're going to show you two tools we like, Dell Diagnostics and HD Sentinel, which are great for uh, just learning how good your drives are, especially if you want to make sure it's new, you want to ensure there's no power on hours, you want to see the health scores. Uh, this is, these are the great tools that we recommend. And the nice thing about Dell Diagnostics also, it'll test a lot more than just your drives, it'll test the whole machine. Uh, but HD Sentinel is a great secondary tool, and what we do is we actually plug a storage array into our server, uh, and then we'll test drives in bulk uh, off you know, the server and be able to, uh, before we ever put it into a live environment, find out, uh, you know, again, power on, hour, power on hours and health score. So, all right, we'll top in. The types of compatible drives are going to be SAS and SATA, and there's some advantages to both. With SAS, you're going to get a faster speed all, overall. You're going to get 6 gigabit per second, where with SATA, you're going to get 3 gigabit per second. So, if you, you know, want to pay for the extra speed, well, you're going to go with SAS and it's going to cost more. And that's the advantage of SATA is it costs less, right? Um, so again, depending on what your application is, if you're just for a home lab, you know, maybe getting a, um, a cheap 3 gigabit per second SATA, maybe that's the way to go, right? Um, and if you do put a 6 gigabit per second SATA in, it will work, but it will clock down to 3 gigabit, so just know that going into it. Um, now, the max sizes are the same for SAS and for SATA. It's going to be 7.68 terabytes per drive slot, so you can put some pretty good storage in overall when you really stop and think about it because the max that you can get on the hard drive side is 2.4 terabytes with a SAS hard drive. So not only will you get superior performance from a solid state drive over a hard drive, you'll actually get, actually get better storage. So it's a win-win when you really stop and think about it. Now it's going to cost more. That's the only you know uh, downside of a solid state drive compared to a hard drive is it does cost more, but it is just a way better quality product and something that we definitely recommend if you're still running on a 12th gen server like the 8, uh, 820 or the 9. 20. Um, people are like, hey, how can I extend the life? You know, what are some band-aids? Well, I always recommend uh, upgrading to a solid state drive and upgrading your RAM. That'll just give you better performance overall and extend the life for, you know, maybe a couple more years before you need to upgrade to uh, a newer system as a whole. So, all right, now that we know a little bit about the speeds, the sizes, the types, let's physically install one and then we'll run Dell Diagnostics and HD Sentinel. All right, now that we have our EST gear on, we're safe to work on our R920. Love this machine. Uh, the 24 bays in front, you can put a ton of SSDs in here and you can really make this a powerful beast. So, all right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove our old hard drive. So just gonna push the red circle, pull out your drive. This is an old 1.8 TB SAS, great drive. And now we're gonna upgrade this to a 3.84 TB SATA drive. So we're just gonna slide this in. I should say SATA SSD, and you're just going to click it. So it's a really easy install overall. Uh, the main thing is just make sure you have your tray open when you slide it in. Uh, it'll catch the edge right here, and you just clip it in. It's a, a very, very simple install. Um, a hot swap drive is super easy to install as a whole. So uh, this part will be the, the easiest installation and the easiest upgrade that you'll probably ever do. <laughs> uh, so now what we're going to show you how to do is how to test your drives with Dell Diagnostics. Hey guys, it's Ben with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you how to test your hard drives with Dell Diagnostics. And technically, it's going to cover more than just hard drives. It'll test your whole system and other components such as your CPUs, your memory, your NIC, the fans, video cards, and much, much more. But like I said, you can also test your hard drives with this, and it's actually a pretty good way to test them, um, and it's a great way to see if there's issues with those drives. So let's go ahead and get started. So what you want to go ahead and do is boot up your server and during post you want to go ahead and press F10 so you can enter the lifecycle controller. Once you're in the lifecycle controller you want to navigate to the hardware diagnostics tab on the left side and then you want to press run hardware diagnostics. And you may get a little warning screen but you just want to go ahead and press yes and it'll take a little bit of a second to load but this will load us into Dell Diagnostics. 
So immediately, whenever we load into Dell Diagnostics, there's a lot of information that pops up. As you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, it shows everything that's gonna be tested. On the right-hand side of the screen, there's lots of information about the test itself. Um, you can also navigate to the results and different configurations and also the event log. One thing I do want to mention about Dell Diagnostics is that some of you out there, when trying to run the hardware diagnostics, you may get an issue, or you may get a warning about the firmware not being supported or the onboard diagnostics not being supported. And in that case, you want to go ahead and you can either do this in Lifecycle Controller itself or you can do it in iDRAC, but you just want to go ahead and update that firmware. And we actually have a video later on in the series that covers mass updates. And one of the things that's in those updates is the onboard diagnostics firmware. So stay tuned for that, and that'll give you all that information you need. And like I said, you can also do this through iDRAC as well. So other than that, there's not really much to say about these tests. You just kind of let it run, and this can this can take a while. It can take, you know, maybe a low end of 20 minutes up to maybe even an hour, especially if you have more memory in your system. Um, it's going to take a while to test all of that. Um, the more drives you have, that might add some time to it. So it really just depends on your system's configuration. But we're going to go ahead and fast forward through this. Like I said, pretty straightforward. Um, if it has any issues, it'll show you that that test failed. Uh, but if it has a check next to the test, like it does on the left-hand side for all of our items here, then that means the test was successful and there's no need to worry about it. So like I said, we're just going to go ahead and fast forward. All right, so we have finally reached the end of our test. And at the end of the test, we can go to the results tab that's in the middle of the screen, and we can go ahead and scroll through all the different messages. You can also view the event log, so that's pretty helpful. But if you go to the results, you can see a more in-depth information about the test that you just ran. So there's something very specific. It's a great place to look. But overall, that's Dell Diagnostics. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's easy to access. Like I said, you may have that one issue where you may have to update the onboard diagnostics firmware. Uh, but other than that, once you do that, you shouldn't have any issues. All you got to do is navigate to the hardware diagnostics and just let the test run. You can let these run and then just go off, do something else, and come back 10, 20 minutes later. Um, and it's a pretty easy way to, one, test all of the drives in your system and make sure they're properly functioning but it's also a great way to test all of the other components in your system. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys HD Sentinel. Alrighty guys, so I have HD Sentinel pulled up right now, and as you can see, we currently have two drives plugged in. Uh, we have this installed into a storage array where we like to plug in multiple drives at a time so we can test those drives. HD Sentinel is an awesome tool because you can see things like the power on hours, which is great, especially when you're buying used equipment. You can see how long that, that drive has been in use. You don't want to be using drives that have been you know, heavily used because then you have a higher risk of drive failure. Um, and that's one of the reasons why HD Sentinel is such a cool tool. But as you can see, we can just go ahead and plug a drive into the array and it'll automatically populate within the software. And like I said, lots of information. It'll give you health scores of the drives. As you can see, the two we have up top, they have a 100% health score, while the one at the bottom has a 99%. So all pretty good. So I hope you guys found this video useful. And if you did, go ahead, smash the subscribe and leave a like. If you're interested in purchasing a custom built server or you're looking to buy some drives, we do have plenty of those in stock. So you can go reach out to us at sales at cloudninjas.com. Sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways, guys, thank you for stopping by.